everybody, and welcome to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. Leading Entrepreneurs of the World features entrepreneurs, founders, and business leaders presenting on cutting-edge topics and the latest industry developments. Our goal is to provide the global business and entrepreneurial communities with a window into the minds of those who are shaping the future of our world. Today, we're very pleased to welcome leading global entrepreneur, Will Beatty. Will is the co-founder and CTO of Kadra. Kadra is Asia's award-winning mobile commerce solution, helping businesses grow sales and improve customer engagement. At Kadra, Will and his team aim at helping businesses solve their own challenges and enabling them to transform their present and future customer experience. With Kadra technology, the Kadra team is bringing the next generation of all-in-one platforms so every business can thrive in the new digital era. Will, it is a great pleasure to have you here with us today to hear more about reimagining customer loyalty in the new normal. Thank you and welcome to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So the, this morning or this evening, if uh, you're in uh, the US, I'm, I'm going to be talking about reimagining uh, customer loyalty in the in what what what's now been described as as the new normal. So the the post pandemic uh, time that that we're now living in. So very quickly about me. So as, as uh, Stelios uh, mentioned, I'm the co-founder and CTO at Kadra. Uh, Kadra has a, has a unified commerce and loyalty platform for retailers leveraging uh, on, on mobile technology. So, so since uh, the, the, the start of the pandemic, there's been a, a very big shift in uh, consumer behavior in terms of uh, the buying buying patterns, um, but also their their expectations, and and really this this is this has changed and and, and changed forever, uh, I believe. Um, so so what we what we've seen um, is that there there's been a, a very uh, big increase in in mobile usage, so mobile device usage that um, can be tablets or uh, smartphones. So Personally, I expected there to be a decrease because uh, with work from home being being the normal, uh, there, there, there's less time commuting where a lot of the a lot of the usage was happening. But but actually, uh, it, it turns out that the mobile devices are being used even more. So uh, globally, um, and these are the latest numbers. Uh, so uh, Q3 uh, 2021, that globally. The, the average time spent using uh, a mobile device is 4.2 hours, uh, which yeah is up 30% since 2019. In Asia, um, uh, especially Southeast Asia, this number is actually closer to, to six hours uh, per day. What's, what's also very, uh, very interesting uh, is, is how many new uh, digital consumers have, have been added. So, in, in Southeast Asia alone, 70 million uh, digital consumers. So a digital consumer uh, is, is somebody who has bought uh, any goods or services online. So if you can imagine in, in, in really uh, uh, you know, a year, 18 months, 70 million new digital consumers. So people who didn't buy anything online uh, are now buying online. So this is the essentially the population of the UK have now been added into the, uh, the online mix. So it's, a, it's an incredible uh, increase. Um, overall in, in, in Southeast Asia, this, this represents 78% of the population uh, 15 years and older. So there's just been a, a, a dramatic uptake in, in digital, digital uh, buying and, and um, the consumption of, uh, of goods and services online. So just, just um, yeah, he, he's just showing how the, um, the how many hours per day are, are spent um, using using apps in, in the various different countries. So on the left side, you can see Indonesia um, is is leading the charge at, at five and a half hours uh, per day. You've got the US there at four point two. So it's it's definitely um, increasing. Uh, across across the board. 
So one of the uh, consumer expectations uh, that, that, that has come about is, um, is same day delivery. Uh, so this, this is a base, baseline expectation for uh, customers who are, who are buying online. So what's interesting is, is uh, so forty six percent of people actually abandon the the shopping cart due to long shipping time. So if as a, a online retailer you're offering uh, slow deliveries, uh, the, there's a pretty good chance that you'll you won't get the sale. Um, a, a, an additional thirty five percent didn't complete the the transaction due to shipping fees as well. So passing on the, the, the fees as well as having a slow delivery time uh, can dramatically impact the, uh, you know, the, the overall experience of, of the customer and, um, and, and ultimately the, the, the sale. So, so what uh, another um, trend that that has, has come about. It's it's a little bit coincidental that it's that it's happened during during this time. But um, it is the is the the demise of third party data. So Apple Apple and Google um, both have been have been introducing privacy features into uh, the mobile devices and and also browsers. Now this is this is having a very big impact on the ability to track. Um, track and then remarket to to consumers a, a, across across the internet. Uh, Apple has a has a feature now where when you when you register for uh, an app, you can actually use a um, a temporary email address. So so from a from a, a merchant point of view, you're you're not even going to see the real email address of of the customer. So that there's been a a number of steps taken, and and it's only increasing. What this what this means is that the dependency on on third party uh, data, which has really been the backbone of, of digital marketing for the last uh, you know ten to twenty years, uh, that that dependency is ha, ha, has to be has to be broken, and there, there's now uh, a lot more. Uh, discussion around around zero party data. So, zero party data very very simply is is data that a customer um, has intentionally shared with a company. So, this this could come in the form of a uh, survey uh, or potentially uh, personal preferences. So, when you uh, when you first register in an app or a website, you, you some uh, some some businesses are uh, you know, presenting you with your preferences, and you willingly share that data so that the that the uh, the, the technology, the platform, can then better kind of personalize the 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 the, the system for you uh, and the offers for you. Uh, first party data is is information um, that's collected directly, uh, so this could be um, you know behavior information, clicks. Uh, views page views all of all of these sorts of things so not not as intentional as zero party data data but still uh attributed directly to the customer so zero party data and first party data going forward are absolutely essential uh to to being able to 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 retain and um you know um, keep your keep your customers around the there's there's also um the marketplaces so a lot of a lot of retailers have um you know do sell on on marketplaces so amazon uh lazada uh, in in asia now this yeah you know, the marketplaces give you a um an instant audience so you know amazon i, I believe you know, gets 100 maybe 200 million visitors a, a, a month to the website so you you get that in an audience but the the problem the problem here is that you don't you don't own the customer so if, if you're selling selling your your products via 
a marketplace, the, the, the customer data is owned by the marketplace itself. And they, uh, you know, they have the ability to, to market directly to, to your customer um, and, and potentially uh, compete with you. So there's, there's been some quite uh, famous brands that have, that have left Amazon because of this Nike uh, being you know, the most prominent is they, they left Amazon because Amazon was able to understand what, what uh, products were, were selling well from, from Nike. And then they actually came up with their own uh, competing products and, and put those products uh, ahead of the, the, the Nike products. So this, um, yeah, obviously creates a, a very big challenge um, and, and really going forward, um, given that, you know, the third party data is, is, is getting much harder to use. It, it's very uh, important that, that brands own their own ecosystem and, and own that, that customer data. So, so retailers um, obviously have, have had a, a really, really difficult last 18 months. Um, they've, they've, they've had, uh, you know, obviously the lockdown, some, you know, stores have been shut um, and they've had to, had to very, very quickly uh, transform uh, their, their, their business and, and adapt to the, the new, the new changes. Um, that being said, the retail, you know, uh, physical retail still has a, a, a very, you know, very important place to, um, in, in the market. But the, the challenge going forward is how to get, how to get the customers back to, back to the store. Um, and, yeah, so so the the challenges here, obviously, getting them, getting people to come back, um, staff, the, the definitely staffing issues, um, then complying with the the social distancing measures as well. So maintaining that that compliance, uh, depending on the market, there are you know the, there are contact tracing um, elements as well that 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 have to be taken into account. So lots of lots of challenges for for retailers retailers going forward but but also opportunities to bridge the uh bridge the gap between the their their digital sales channel and and the the, the physical channel um th there are certain product categories like fashion where there you know there's just no um there's no alternative to going into the store and actually trying it on so anyone who's tried to buy fashion online um, knows that you know it, it's very challenging and, and has a high, very high rate of returns. So these sorts of businesses that they, they, they will, um, you know, they they will still thrive and and, and succeed going forward, but they need to uh, make make a few changes. So yeah, pre pre pandemic. Um, and really, for let's say the last the last decade, there's been a lot of a lot of uh, talk about omni-channel. Um, the, the the word is has almost got a negative connotation now because it's been so overused, and uh, very few retailers have actually uh, achieved achieved omni omni-channel. It was seen a little bit as a, a luxury, so only the the really big brands would. Uh, have the resources and the um, and the the ability to 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 implement it, but now um, in in this in this new normal, it it's not a luxury that that every every retailer um, has been has been forced uh, a lot of them reluctantly into into uh, going online, but that's that's really a, a first step. So. Pre-pandemic, if, if the retailer didn't have any online uh, presence, first step is is going online. But that that um, is the first step in in what is a, a much bigger digital transformation. In in my opinion, I, I believe that the the overall digital trans transformation of of the retail uh, space has has been accelerated by ten years. A lot of a lot of this was coming. The technology 
uh, has been around now for, for a while, but there wasn't that um, urgency in, in the sector to, to actually adapt. And that's, that's, that's all changed. Um, the, the, one of the, the challenges is, is now, now that you know, essentially every every retailer every has has set up an online store. The the playing field is even, so it's very difficult to uh, to differentiate yourself and uh, from 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 the crowd. But previously, you know, they're very they're very well um, connected with with a great kind of set of digital channels. Those retailers, you know, could we're succeeding, but now every everyone's the same. Um, this this also has has driven uh, the the customer acquisition costs to to increase. So because now every every retailer is online and, and competing uh, for you know essentially for the same customers, the it's driving the the cost of acquisition. So the the digital marketing costs are are increasing, uh, which in in that context the retailers need to be thinking about um re retention and, and investing more in the the retention side of things as, as opposed to acquisition because a, a few yeah you know, a, a few steps to uh, towards retention uh, can can actually yield a much better result than than bringing in new customers which which now is even more more challenging um, so to 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 get on the channel right, um, there there are a few kind of high level requirements that that are needed from the retailers. Uh, number one, uh, and this is by far the single biggest challenge uh, for for uh, retailers that are online and and have a physical presence, and that's the the inventory management. So um, often the Often the, the the point of sale systems that are that are in store uh, can be very uh, old in, in terms of technology. Some not even connected to the internet. Uh, so so the, the, there's a need to really upgrade and, and centralize so that you don't have the you don't have a problem where the 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 online uh, experience is is actually worse than than the in store experience. And how that can happen is that if a, if the online store doesn't have a um, an up to date record of, of of what what inventory is available, that means that customers can be placing orders without the the inventory being there. So if someone then comes into a physical store, they can actually take the inventory, and and the priority is generally given to the the, the in store traffic. And and this is you know obviously creates a, a very a very unpleasant customer experience, and um, you know would 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 lead a customer to to leave. I mean they they, they wouldn't come back if, if that was the the, the experience. Uh, another another central central requirement for for omnichannel is free Wi-Fi. It sounds very basic. Um, and it, it is uh, basic, but if you if you want your 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 customers to be to be um, in your store, uh, you know, leveraging buying potentially through through their devices or at least browsing through their devices, uh, it's it's a baseline expectation from consumers that you know there, there's free free Wi-Fi available. Um, Another another requirement is a, a unified commerce platform. So if if you're if you're attempting to you know uh, unify across your digital and, and physical channels, doing so in in disconnected systems uh, will you know create a lot of challenges. Uh, where you know basic basic things, so the inventory is one which I mentioned, but also the uh, pricing. So having having different pricing or, or offers online versus versus in store can can contribute to to an overall negative customer experience um, the i think you know another another main requirement is that the consumer 
facing mobile app but, but websites are certainly a first step uh, very very strong for for the acquisition of, of new customers however when you think about you know the the bridging that 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 physical and, and digital experience uh, the the one thing that that every every consumer has in their hand uh, when they walk into a store is is a is a smartphone um, and and I'll, I'll mention in, in, in a minute a, a few of the, the technologies available, but there are there are just fundamental limitations of of what can be done with a with a with a mobile website, even if it you know is, is optimized. So one one um, uh, yeah one one uh, service that that is, has really uh, taken off. Uh, since uh, since the pandemic uh, is is what's called click and collect or otherwise known as uh, buy online online pick up in store. So since since the pandemic started, uh, it, it it's actually the the number of retailers offering this has has increased five hundred and thirty six percent. It's been a massive uh, massive increase, um, and this is this is really. Um, the, the retailers responding to um, obviously that you know there've been restrictions and um, around around COVID, so you know, they've been forced to forced to do this. But it's also in response to the the consumer behaviour. Um, there, you know, it, it, it's there's been a you know a, a definitely a shift in in the mindset of people. The, going to going to stores is, is not necessarily something that, that you want to do anymore uh, but there's also there's also really uh, some some nice benefits to the consumer one no shipping fees so uh, shipping in general whether it's the speed or the cost is one of the um, you know the, the, the biggest causes of a, a, a lost transaction so the with with click and collect there's, there's obviously no shipping fees faster service so if if you want something uh today now in an hour um that's that's possible because the the the, the inventory is there in store you know it's there um and and you can just go and get it so even even with a very uh fast shipping um provider uh it's 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 never it's rarely gonna gonna be um uh, click and collect uh, the other the other benefit is there's no out of stock surprises. So buying online, um, it, there is that chance that the order is taken and and the inventory isn't actually available. Um, you know, I I myself you know order through Amazon groceries and they they just remove items that that they don't have and you get a refund, which you know is 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 frustrating. Um, but with with click and collect, uh, you don't get that. That surprise. So, looking, yeah, looking at at, at last year, um, the the click and collect sales uh, actually increased, uh, pretty much doubled the actual actual sales, and then the the number of retailers offering offering a service uh, went from six point nine percent in in two thousand nineteen to forty three point seven percent. Um, I believe that that number is probably higher now. This is this is 2020 data. Um, it's probably closer to 60, 70 percent. And and the retailers um, now it, it's becoming a, a baseline ex expectation of, of consumers that that they do offer this. Which means if you don't offer it, you you risk the um, you risk losing the, the the transaction to to a competitor that does. What's what's interesting in terms of the the actual consumer um, sentiment here around around click and collect and, and why why they like it. Um, so forty seven percent and and remember this this is within the context of of um, the pandemic. But forty seven percent of people uh, want to avoid going to a store to a store. Um, I'm sure within this there, you know, there are lots of reasons. Um, you know, I think, I think even even now, 
Um, you know, there's still anxiety about being in, in crowded spaces. Um, and and that's that's certainly reflected uh, in in this data. Um, again, a common theme: um, so forty five percent of people want to avoid paying for shipping. So any any chance to uh, save on on the overall transaction, um, you know, is is certainly um, driving this. So. So a, a, a very um, interesting, interesting trend that, that that's evolving in, in retail uh, is is a um, a technology, well, a, a set of technologies which which makes up Scan and Go. So Scan and Go is the is the ability for a consumer to walk into a store, use their phone, uh, a mobile app, and and actually scan the barcode. And complete the transaction via the, the, the phone. So this this has uh, been been famously rolled rolled out um, in the US by Walmart, actually uh, one of the the leaders with this uh, technology. Um, but it's it's rapidly evolving as a as a new way to shop. And you know, if you, you think about um, you know the the sentiment for for click and collect, it if people genuinely don't want to spend time in stores or go to stores, uh, there, there's a real genuine need for retailers to make the experience as fast uh, a, a, as possible um, and also uh, reduce, reduce queuing time. So in the context of a pandemic, queuing, uh, queuing up for, uh, to complete your transaction, with a, a, a bunch of uh, strangers it, is something that you know makes makes people anxious. So so this this um, kind of new new technology is is allowing that. So the the consumer reduces the the queuing time. They spend less time. They're more empowered um, to to in in their shopping experience, um, and it's a, it's an end to end contact with, contactless shopping experience. So contactless payment has been has been around you know, for about a, a decade now. This is a full contactless shopping. So all, all the consumer needs is a, is a smartphone and, and, a, and a mobile app. The, the retailer benefit is uh, better store throughput. So um, can be more efficient, the less queuing people can, uh, which means you can have more customers uh, coming through. That you also need less staff and actually less uh, point of sale uh, counters, and this this then opens the opportunity to focus on customer service. Uh, so instead of uh, having a having a, a sales assistant sitting at the counter, uh, you know, checking out all, all of the customers, they can actually be on the on the floor and and helping to uh, provide a better better service. Um, another, well, one of, one of the, the, the major benefits to the, the retailer is, is data. So with, without this, this sort of solution where the, the consumer is initiating the transaction through their device, the, the, the transactions are, are largely anonymous. So in, in retail, when, when the, the transactions happen, the purchases are made, the unless they have um, let's say a, 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 a loyalty system where they ask for identification from from the consumer um, the those transactions are going through and they're anonymous which means that you the the retailer doesn't actually understand what their customers uh, are doing which which creates a um, creates creates a challenge in terms of uh, the the marketing that they do. So with with scan and go because it's um, because the, the the sale is actually attributed to a to a customer record. It means that the the retailer is is getting getting insight into into that customer behavior and that can be used for uh, for for marketing and to to better personalize the offers uh, offers and also to help. Um, you know, kind of shape their 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 product catalog around what what 
uh, the, the, the consumer side. So this is a this is very very important going forward. There's another another technology um, uh, called proximity beacons. So these are um, low powered Bluetooth uh, devices that can essentially detect when uh, a customer using using a smartphone with a, a mobile app so there must be a mobile app in place uh, that can detect when when a customer enters a store or in a larger store can actually be the aisle um, and um, can also detect when when they they move outside of of, of that zone uh, so again this is this this presents um, you know a, a, a lot of a lot of data for the retailers in terms of uh, how to how to optimize uh, the, the store, uh, but also the, there's opportunities here for uh, for rewarding customers for for this behavior. So, you know, the the, the big challenge now is how to get people back to the store. The one one way to 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 do that is to actually incentivize that behavior. That can be in the form of, um, you know, loyalty points if, if there's a loyalty program in place, or you know, kind of flash flash discounts for for the behaviour. Um, but it starts from having the ability to track the the store visit. So having a proximity beacon in place will will allow that. The other the other great uh, use of this is um, to save purchases. So um, queuing. Queuing is 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 still a still a problem. Uh, people abandon their purchase if, if the queue is uh, is is too long. What what this technology can allow is you can detect when a customer has left the store, and if this is if this is actually connected um, to to the sales data, uh, what what you can do is is trigger marketing or, or campaigns to that customer to try and save the sale. So you can detect that they've left without completing a, a transaction and uh, potentially send an offer saying, you know, if, if you come back today, we'll, we'll give you 5% off or, or whatever it may be. Um, so it's very, very, very interesting um, technology. I think the pre-pandemic, pre um, this, uh, this technology obviously existed. It's been around for roughly five years, but I think pre-pandemic it's it's still seen as a little bit invasive the but you know with with the pandemic uh it, and there's been a rise of, of sort of contact tracing apps and and this this technology in fact that this technology has has been used in, in several markets um so i think customers are a bit more uh are a bit more uh responsive to this and and don't see it quite as, as as such a negative thing but it it needs to be yeah it needs to be um the messaging around it needs to be uh quite quite careful um but as if there's a incentive a genuine incentive for uh consumers to to um to to use this then then it it, it, it can work so the the other thing um, that that I think is 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 evolving, or at least should evolve. So airlines um, have been have been doing this very effectively for years. So uh, that they have very very clear statuses uh, in in their in their programs, and what they what they do and have done effectively is they reward the the. Uh, the status with uh, priority queues. So, you know, business, there's a business class queue, there's a first class queue, there's an economy, economy class queue. This, this is very effective and, and creates, a, creates a real uh, stickiness to the, to the brand and, and the loyalty, uh, loyalty program. Because if you're used to this, this level of service moving to a, um, to, to a different airline, a different, different program, uh, you you would lose that, and that 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 that's a a real tangible benefit that that, that people people like. So, 
so what what i believe um retailers need to be doing now is is offering priority queues so and this this can be for for click and collect so having a, a dedicated a dedicated queue for a click and collect a dedicated queue for for for, for scanning scan and go but rewarding rewarding the loyal customers so those that are part of the loyalty program have downloaded the app rewarding those customers with with a with a better service um and and ultimately this this does require rethinking the physical space to to allow it uh, but if you you consider scan and go reduces the, the the kind of need for the point of sale you can reduce the the point of sale counters and then focus more on on on, on these priority queues so fostering fostering loyalty so the, there was an interesting uh, study done by by Facebook and, and Bain and Company looking at um, looking at essentially at, at you know the digital trans transformation and, and the changes in in the behaviour and um, uh, since since the pandemic started. Uh, so whilst you know there was a, a very big increase in the number of digital consumers, um, there there's also uh the the loyalty to brands has is, is also not there so so 51 percent of uh southeast asian consumers switched their their most purchased brand in the past three months so it, it goes back to what i what i said before i mean in an, in this new environment uh there's very much a, a level playing field so putting putting your your products online on an on an e-commerce store is only the first step of what is a, a, a much a much bigger journey so uh it, it, it makes it easy easy for consumers to to switch um and makes it harder for for retailers to differentiate their value uh to to the consumer um so the yeah the the, the reasons why people switch um product quality is one better availability so this again comes back to the the you know the 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 inventory having having that all up to date and again faster delivery time so if uh if uh, if a competitor offers either a faster delivery time or a cheaper delivery option it makes it very very easy for for a consumer to switch and that 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 loyalty um it, it it is not really there which means the the, the brands have to work a lot harder uh, to 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 retain their their customers so building a building a strong loyalty program um which in in all of what i presented is 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 fundamental so you know in terms of getting people back to the store there needs to be there need to be incentives. There have to be incentives for consumers to 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 go back to change the behavior because the the new behavior uh, is that you stay at home most of the time uh, and and stay and do your shopping from from home. Uh, so so brands have to really think about um, how how they can incentivize the 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 consumer to 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 go back to the store which which ultimately is um is is, is what they what what they need to do uh, so a strong loyalty program so needs to be very easily accessible um which you know the 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 best and most easily accessible loyalty programs are, have a have a mobile app so there has to be a mobile app in place where you can access your points, you can see your points balance, uh, you can see what rewards uh, you have available. Um, it needs to be very simple to earn, uh, very simple to use rewards. If there are status tiers, uh, it needs to be attainable and, and attainable, you know, fairly quickly. So within, a, you know, anything more than 12 months to, to attain that status, it's, it's, it's not really going to work 
and uh, lastly, the need to be unique benefits. So um, if if it's purely based around uh, points and, and, and discounts, it can be very, very easily replicated by, by competitors. And essentially you, you, the retailers will get into a, a race to the bottom where they're both trying to undercut each other um, from, a, from a loyalty point of view. And that's a, that's a very, very bad um, state to be in. So the unique benefits um, it, is something that, you know, that retailers need to think about this you know this uh, if you think about airlines um the priority queue the the lounge access uh the, these sorts of things they're 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 not monetary um rewards to 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 the consumer so uh but they have a a, a very high perceived value uh so it, if if it's fashion it could you know potentially be a um you know, having a having a you know, booking a time to 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 do a fitting uh, in store. Uh, if if it's a wine retailer, it could be um, you know access to early access to 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 rare wines or invites to wine. So it really depends on on the on the the industry, but but it, it needs to be unique um, and and ideally ideally not um not something that is has has a, a an easily defined monetary value so it needs to be a bit more um of a, a an experience that, that the, the, the the customer um, can can enjoy so interestingly amazon prime um is probably the 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 biggest and and most successful loyalty program in the world. Um, they have now over two hundred million. Dollars. And what's interesting is it's a paid program as well. Uh, the 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 cost is around twelve ninety nine a month. But in terms of the the benefits that that, that Amazon Prime uh, offers, there's no loyalty points. So there's there's no loyalty points. There's no discount. Uh, so I instead, what what they offer uh, is uh, free delivery. So free delivery for orders over over a specific value. They do have uh, the, the sort of auxiliary services like Prime Video, Prime Music, um, early access to uh, to to products. Now. The, the free delivery is is key and the sort of a running a running theme in this presentation around delivery um, the what what this drives is uh, a much higher spend so because because the the customer is trying to um, trying to to reach that threshold to get free delivery they end up spending more so uh, uh, an Amazon Prime member spends um, two yeah, almost two and a half times more per year than a than a non-member. Uh, so it's fourteen hundred dollars versus versus six six hundred dollars, and this is actually driven by the fact that they they want to get free delivery. Um, so very very um, yeah, lots lots to be learned from from Amazon. I mean, in terms of the 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 service that that Amazon offers, um, the customer service, that's it's one of you know one of if not the best uh, on online retailers, and and you know uh, retailers that are, are selling direct to consumer, they they need to be looking at this and looking at at, at what works, and it, yeah, delivery delivery is 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 really core. Um, Okay, so yeah, just 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 a summary. So yeah, in, in terms of the the overall um, uh, trends and and uh, things that that the retailers need to be thinking about, uh, same day delivery, uh, free delivery, ideally, uh, offering click and collect or or buy online, pay in store. Potentially the the introduction of proximity beacons to uh, detect 
when when customers are in store um, and and also incentivize the the customers for for that behavior uh, scan and go so allowing the customers to complete the, the transaction in store via uh, via their mobile phone instead of queuing um, and again this this has a you know a, a allows to collect a, a, a huge amount of, of, of data uh, the introduction of loyalty programs so again if you want to it's, it's cool because if you want to uh, incentivize behaviors whether it's scan and go or uh, just simply a visit to the store there needs to be a loyalty program to there um, to, 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 to leverage that um, a, a mobile app in, in order to, to bridge that retail um, retail digital experience a mobile app is is absolutely essential so all of these these things proximity proximity beacons scan and go um, are really not possible with without without a mobile app in, in the hands of, of consumers. Um, a strong data platform. So first first party, zero party data um, needs to be contained and, and uh, leveraged. Uh, with the mobile phone, uh, with a mobile app rather, um, push notification marketing. So this, this channel allows to reach consumers, um, you know, instantly in in a way um, that, that that they do notice i mean that the overall the overall uh open rates of a, of a push versus email but it's 20 times email so this is by far the, the most effective marketing channel that comes back to the need of, of, of having a mobile app um, um yeah and then leveraging leveraging that zero and first party data to to personalize offers and and the experience so really um focusing using that data to to focus on on retention in in the context where uh acquisition is is becoming so much more more challenging mm -hmm.